Jackie Dink here. Behind me is probably one of our fiercest rivals throughout the years. Time Attack Rivals this, this weekend really is Time Attack Rivals because that is, if anything, our Time Attack rival. Welcome, Alex Moss and his Super K, <laughs> which is now just straight up batshit insane. Yeah. Take it away. Yeah, it, it's kind of crazy. It's not much of an S2000 anymore, if we're being honest. It has a uh, TSX engine, it has a turbo now, it has a BMW transmission, it has a Ford diff, crazy aero from Zebulon, um, PDM, so full rewire of the car, standalone ECU, um, yeah, it's full on street car. <laughs> <laughs> First off, let's admire this thing, okay, because I think this is probably as, I don't know, as crazy as you can go with an S2000 chassis while maintaining still most of the chassis parts of it, if you like. Like, I don't know. Big Bad Wolf is pretty wild. Big Bad Wolf is pretty crazy, Robert yeah. Robert is fucking awesome. Yep. But I think this might have exceeded it in terms of a technological advancement level of development, perhaps. Yeah. So, as I've you know, said before, this car, when I bought it, was just supposed to be kind of a, a track rack car to basic build to go and turn a ton of laps in. Um, and then I got hooked on the S2000, or the, the time attack bug. Uh, and we built it into this. So yeah, it's it's a bit of a Frankenstein. Uh, it's got good aero, it's got great suspension, it makes decent power. Um, it's very light. Well, not very light, but it's it's light for a street mod car. Um, and it's pretty quick and it's a lot of fun. Okay, okay let's start at the front. Start at the front. We have our Zebulon uh, splitter, which is a full 3D profiled splitter with tunnels in it. Ooh. Um, okay. which we believe until this year was the uh, class of, of street mod. Um, you guys have obviously stepped up the game this year with your, your splitter and we think that uh, we've been talking about you and we believe that you've, you've uh, evened the score there at least. Then we have our trusty CR AP2 front bumper which came from Jackie Ding's old S2000. That was actually my old bumper. Yep. I bought that from Jackie and we've got pictures of it when it was still all white and red and blue. The hood has been 100% gutted so there's no hinges in it, there's no substructure to it at all. Uh, four hub pins to get that off. Jay's Racing fenders. 
some wonderful Koenig hypergram wheels that were previously bent on Jackie Ding's S2000. <laughs> Oh, I'm all about talking server though, and I, I don't know if you can tell. Like, like look, I, I don't know if you can tell, like, yeah. Anyway! <laughs> homemade side skirts, uh, Zebulon helped us design those, but they are homemade um, out of Alumalite That's currently. Cool, actually, yeah. Um, so yeah, we're the, the Zebulon designed, uh, me and Andy built. Uh, under the hood we've got an ASM built, um, well, ASM put together stock K24 with a big Garrett, uh, G25660. You want to open it? Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah, we can open it. We're going to show off how light the hood is. Oh, that is like. Oh, wow, it is that like. We're <laughs> not joking about fully cut. Yeah, it's 100%. Yeah. There's nothing, nothing left. left in there. That's cool. Which, if I ever damage this and don't get another one because it took us forever to gut it and then put those arrow catches in so they all lined up. Right. That is a stock engine. Yep, stock TSX engine for now. Garrett G25 660 for now. We hope to even the power score at some point during the year once we get the, the transmission all figured out. How much power actually? Right, right. this weekend, uh, 425. On full kill, this will do 530. At Gingerman, when we did what was our record lap at Gingerman, we were making 530. Was? Yeah, it was. Yep. Sean has it now. <laughs> okay. Came me out of intake manifold. Came me out of intake manifold. Um, yeah, I'm not sure yeah, what else there is to. Like fuel rail? Yeah. Yep, stock oh, fuel wow. rail. Big injectors. It's running E85. Mm. Um, Reinhardt double adjustable trucks all around. Yep, so we're even on that one. Inside we have a BMW 7 speed dual clutch transmission that is paddle shifted. You can say either we worked around the sequential rules and, and used a stock transmission, or we just swapped in a street automatic transmission, depending on which way you want to look at it. Well, first we, off... We like looking at it like we swapped in just an automatic. It's not an automatic. Automatic is torque converter. It's what you find in the ZF8HP, like the Supra, right? Yeah. That's an automatic. That's, that's the concept of the automatic. This is what people set lazily call the automatic, but it's actually a dual clutch. Yeah, yeah, so it's more it's a, like a manual transmission. This is what comes in a, a BMW. It's very similar to what comes in a Porsche. It's what everybody who is a purist says, don't get the one with that transmission yeah. because it's no way near as fun. But it um, is faster. But it's a lot faster. <laughs> so the, the, actually the acceleration rate on this at Gingerman from turn 10 to turn 11 until the, the drag takes over, Acceleration rate is almost identical at 400 wheel horse as 500 wheel horse with an H pattern. I believe so. It. It's, it's it's basically no, making that up. There's no like. There's no delay. There's no delay, delay yeah. and you don't fall out of boost. Yep. So our boost line just actually it, it jumps a little bit on each shift. Well, walk us through. How do you make it work? How is it <laughs> operated? So the magic is in a company called HTG out of Poland makes a basically like a standalone ECU, but they call it a GCU, a gearbox control unit. So it's a little computer that sits. It's actually sitting in the center console, and it send signals to all the solenoids um, in the transmission to operate the clutches and operate the shift forks and all of that stuff. And then we have CAN bus integration from that to our AM Infinity ECU to tell the ECU when to do shift cuts and when to do throttle blips and all that kind of stuff. And then we've got our paddle shifters on our steering wheel here. Which is full disconnect. Which is full disconnect. Wow. Super That's cool. Like, this is pretty freaking next level. So, Are these just PlayStation triggers? Yeah, they're, they're actually sim racing uh, <laughs> paddles from a company called ARC, I think. ARD. ARD. Yeah, ARC like went bust. So, yeah, we've got uh, shifters. We have um, flashes for when I want Jackie to get out of the way, push this, and it flashes the headlights. Uh, we got uh, radio here so we can call back, uh, change the dash pages. Yeah back and forth and then a little marker so if something happens on track press this button and it puts a mark in our data logs so we know where to go back to in the data logs oh, to look nice. at it so gear how where's the actual selector because i see you got a little the selector is that little <laughs> keypad down there oh, oh wow so that's so like the aston martin yeah keypad yeah. thing in the middle a lot of people Damn. swap in like the bmw shifter but we wanted something a little more futuristic and a this little more custom. PR Indy and a launch. Yeah. There's a launch control mode on this. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty sick. We don't even have that. So that combined with anti-lag and this thing can get off the line pretty well. 
Oh yeah, you have a Ford diff now. You're gonna, you don't gotta worry about launching, roasting nope. the diff. Got a Ford diff now. I have a Ford Explorer. So <laughs> nice. We got a parts SUV over there just in case something blows up. <laughs> AM CD5 dash inside. OMP driver's seat. Uh, Recaro passenger seat. This this is new this year as well. This roof. This is just a thin carbon skin. This roof weighs about three pounds without the window. Right. Yeah, have a look inside there. It, it actually makes the car super roomy inside. Yeah, it's, Dude, <laughs> give it like an extra inch of room. Yeah. Stop tech brakes. Then we've got Zebulon rear wing. I think it might have us beat in wing. terms of the biggest the rear fucking wing. Yeah, the, the, the end plates are new this year. The wing um, is very long also. Yes. yes. I think the quarter is longer than ours. Yes. Yeah, wow. it's, it's, it, it works pretty well for us. It's a 3D, 3D end plate. 3D end plate, yeah. yeah. Pretty complicated pretty end plate. And then um, we have wise fab suspension all around. So we've got drop spindles, aluminum oh, arms. Oh, Yep. Wow. So that's there. Tires, we like the Nankang CR1s, just like you guys. So we run those most of the time for time attack. And then, oh, the camera on the back for the rear view mirror. We have a rear view camera instead of a mirror. You, you've gone through what is probably like, well, not, not I know for a fact, because not only years and years of work, but thousands of hours of development yes. hours in this thing. Yep. In like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, Andy Smedegaard at S Motorsports has built the car and, and put in all of the effort and all of the brains. I'm sure, like you guys, Jackie comes to you with some crazy idea, like we should do this, and, and you, you, and you go, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then... And then we do it anyway. And then, <laughs> yeah, right. About a week later, he comes back with, well, you know, we could do ABC and... That's that's how these things um, go. Today or this weekend was our last test before One Lap of America. Oh yeah, you got to tell, tell us so, about that. Yeah. So, two, two weeks. <laughs> this car is going to one lap in this current guise. And I just want to say like after, this is kind of like their first competitional test. If you like. Yep, first competition event. I know they've done, done like some barber track days, stuff like yep. that. Lots of ripped up and down Andy's shop street. Yep, hundreds and hundreds of laps of Andy's street. And lots and lots of dyno miles. Yes. Just feeling the upshifts, downshift, downshift, yep. upshifts. And yep. like now it's doing one lap, one of the toughest competition in terms of any yeah. road legal car in the US ever. Yeah. That's, that's nutty. That's really yep. up there. So Andy and I are going to live in this basically for a week, do 4,000 track or 4,000 street miles and eight time attack events, I think, in seven days. Good luck on your back. Thank you. <laughs> it actually, this car rides pretty nice. It's still pretty soft. Oh, yeah, have you seen the exhaust that no. points at it? Oh, yeah. Another another great street car thing. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, burn, burn your competitor's ankles, why don't you? Yep. Oh, with that, with when you when you set up anti lag, that's pretty sick. Get the nice far. flames. Yeah, they, they touch the ground. They'll, oh, they'll come out to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yep. On, honestly, to me, this is. I don't know. As an S2000 guy, and we did start an S2000 guy. Okay, S2000 channel. And everything. <laughs> I know we've abandoned our roots, but when you see something like this, you can't help but even though always like, God damn that guy. I hate that guy. But that car is cool though. You know what I mean? It, there's always that sense of it. Yeah. And it's. It's so wild and so nutty and it's such an evolutionary term of what an S2000 can be. It's not what every S2000 should be, but what it can become. Seeing you guys do what you're doing with this <laughs> makes me feel pretty happy because it's like we're competing against almost a shadow of ourselves, except better. Except Andy is better than us. If yes. <laughs> well, we'll be honest about that. Well, I think it's it's amazing to me the cars are so, or were, last year at least, they were so evenly matched. I think, yeah. you know, depending on where you guys are with your development this year, if you're kind of at... We're done. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think we're going to be pretty close again. Last year, we came and hit the ground running. Like, we were ready to go at the start of the yeah, season. Yeah. And I you guys, were, I think, were behind us. This year, I feel like you guys are, like, ready to go, ready to rock. And we're, like, still sorting out the bugs and the issues and, and things like that. So hopefully, we can uh, catch you guys and, and give you guys a good run towards the end of the year. It'll be fun. Actually, curb weight on the car now that it has a DCT in it, like, before and after. Last time we, we weighed the car, it didn't have the splitter on it. But it weighed 25, 25 Dude. with the DCT in it. Oh fuck! Oh, wow. Which, oh, wow. yeah, it's it's light. And before that, yeah. before the DCT, were you guys like 26, 25 ish? We weighed it once, and it was like 24 something, 24, 20, or 24. Without you. Without me again, yeah. So I, we've added about 100 pounds, 100 pounds with the DCT. Just the gain on the straights and everything. It should. 
100 it, pounds, it, yeah, right. the old and, and it's 100 pounds, like, at the bottom of the car, in the middle in of the, the car. Center. It's yep. like, if you're going to add 100 pounds to a car, that's where you're going to add it. Yep. So, yeah, that's, that's about it. I mean, it's simple, but it's complicated. It's the only thing simple is the part list you listed. And the, everything complica complicated is how everything went in. It was a lot of work to make it happen. Uh, a lot of self-doubt. <laughs> and if it's gonna work and there's still a long way to go to make it work properly it's it's you know we're still battling issues we almost spun the car today with uh or yesterday <laughs> because the downshifts weren't crisp they were kind of locking the rear wheels right. and very serious <laughs> question yeah in terms of a development schedule timeline or like yeah development plot zero to 100 percent being done where are we for the car we're, we're, oh yeah like just yeah um for pure time attack one lap go out do one lap and get it done we're probably 85 percent of the way there i would say okay for hpde for an hpde car go out do 25 sessions drive the car home or 25 minute sessions drive the car home 15 20 percent of the way there we've got a long way to go yet it's a new product it's like yeah. technology i mean you know when something new comes out, new technology, it advances so quickly yep. and it's so bad to begin with. Yep. Look at battery cars, yeah. electric cars. Yeah. You laughed at those 10 years ago, look at it now. Right. It's fucking winning street, or like getting in street, uh, street yeah. park podiums. This, yeah. this will be like that. It's still got ways to go, but the potential of what it can be yep. is what I think is pretty spectacular about the DCT swap. So I, for one, I am a big proponent of doing something crazy like this. I'm not a proponent of him doing something like this in his car, <laughs> but it's cool. It's cool. When, you, when you see this thing on the track, you can't just you can't help but smile because you know how much work has gone into this to make it what it is today, and that's what I think we should appreciate Time Attack more for. Quick and all.